Hello, Addison. Hey, Billy. I'm excited. This is a this is going to be a jam packed episode. We've got Sterling Whitaker with us. We've got the gang back together, all three of us. It's our last episode of the season, too. So a little bit sad. I feel like. Uh, yeah, I, I I am sad. Especially since I actually liked 1923. 1883, as Billy, you and I know, well, everyone else who's listened to the podcast knows, <laughs> I just was not the biggest fan. I, I enjoyed it, but not enough that, like, I think 1923, if I wasn't being paid to watch for work, I actually would watch on my own, which that's a very big statement for me to make right now. Okay, we've gotten Addison's courtesy, how much she hated 1883 comment <laughs> out of the way, like we do every week. It's become like a new staple of the show. Addison just sort of throws some subtle shade at 1883 before we get on with the 1923 podcast. Even though she acted like she liked it for the better part of a year, now we know it doesn't bode well for her true opinion of us, Sterling. No, real quick. I before let me That's just true. Let, That's true. Let me just correct that real quick, Billy. I was pretty vocal during our recordings of 1883 that I did not love it. So I, I was not being facetious. I was being very truthful. You said you didn't like parts and parts made you uncomfortable. But but if that was you like being clear, um, <laughs> I'm just saying you might want to sharpen those communication skills as you head into more personal relationship. Just a quick little <laughs> powwow and some marriage advice should you find your your true love in the future. Like you might want to be a little more direct because us men are a little dense when it comes to these things. And you kind of hinted and beat it around the bush. Like, you got to wow, be a little this, more obvious than that. This podcast just turned into a relationship advice session. Well, before we get to, you know, enough enough about me. We did not come here to talk about, about me and uh, sharpening of my clarity here. Before we bring Sterling in to kind of all three of us talk about just, just our thoughts on the season itself, let us talk about this past episode and maybe where – were we wrong – Billy, on any of the, I mean, let's be real, the whole Countess, all the above, like that, it got, it, it's confusing. So to answer your question, we have, we were not wrong, but we made one critical error. First of all, it, it's really dense. Like there's no sort of consensus when it comes to how Alex got her title of Countess. And we learned that to be true. The mistake we made is there's a difference between royalty and nobility. We were saying that she has a royal bloodline, and that may not be the case. Royal refers to the king, the queen, and their direct family. Okay. Nobility has to do with kind of a wider sort of social circle. Yeah, nobility is different from royalty, and, and that's important to recognize because I think that will play into a role um, in season two when we kind of figure out who the heck she actually is. But one thing that people really liked, though, Addison, was your theory about how Alex being nobility might have the funds to take care of some of the Dutton family problems that are being brought on by Don Whitfield. Wow. Thanks y'all. I felt pretty good about that one too, but I, I appreciate that other people are on, on board as well. The one comment I thought was funny, and there was a lot of comments, especially when it came to the YouTube video. The one guy had the comment where he said something like, so a noble flies overboard and the best they can do is throw a donut, no hitting the brakes and <laughs> dropping a lifeboat. I mean, they did kind of give up on him pretty quickly. There wasn't a lot of panic when old Arthur went fly, <laughs> flying into the ocean below. <laughs> well, even his dad, like, he was more concerned about, you know, I mean, yes, uh, no, as he goes to the the railing. But then he's more concerned about banishing Alex to her room, like. I think that would be the last of my, like the least of my concern in that moment. I'd be like, all right, you know, how are we going to get to my son? But no, first let's pause real quick and banish Alex as my poor son's floating in the ocean. Yeah. They gave up on that boy quick. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we don't know. Did he die? Did he survive? I, we don't know. Right. Oh, I got to imagine he died. Yeah. I mean, that was a long drop into some pretty cold drop. water. Just saying. You think he just he clawed on to the edge of the railing and pulled himself <laughs> back? He, he's like the rest of the voyage. He's just no. hanging out there waiting to. <laughs> no, I don't think Taylor Sheridan's necessarily going to do that. But I'm just saying. Hmm. You know, you're on a winning streak with your theory about 
the Alex paying off the debt. I want just I'm just saying stop while just you're stop ahead. Stop now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because <laughs> stop while I'm ahead. Well, on that note, Sterling, welcome back. I'm excited for all three of us to give yeah, kind of a kind of a grading of what we thought of 1923, but also why we are giving the grading that we're giving. So, Sterling, I'm I'm going to toss the baton to you and and let you go first. Okay. I give this an A. Um, This is a great season, and I have loved this season uh, a lot more than Yellowstone season five, you know, for me. Um, It's better written, you know, and uh, you have a, a balance of violence and romance for me. You know, yeah, absolutely. So an A, so an A from you, a solid A. Yeah, Billy, I didn't like 1923 oh. as much as I did um, some of the other. In fact, I would say it's my least favorite of all the Taylor Sheridan. Really? Wow. Thus oh, far, and I don't know. Okay. I necessarily realized that in the moment, um, episode to episode, I enjoyed. But as I sort of pull back and look at the the whole series as a whole. I thought separate locations kind of really took away from the show as a whole and didn't let us really get to know any character 100%, especially Jacob and Kara. Uh, I didn't think Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford underwhelmed me a little bit. Like his character was almost a supporting character, which is a little bit of a surprise. Kara Dutton, Helen Mirren was very good at times, um, but they just gave her a lot of big lines and, and big sort of things to say and she was she was really good angry um still good but maybe not as good sort of during those soft moments although of the two of them she was definitely the star i didn't feel like i know who those characters are they're a little bit flat still and with just you know one season remaining i'm not feeling great about a chance of those characters kind of getting rounded out Uh, spencer and alex were kind of the opposite we spent a lot of time with spencer and alex but i would argue Mm -hmm. maybe a little too much time Mm -hmm. at some point i'm like okay let's just let's just get them home already Mm-hmm. It's been um, eight episodes here and they're running into one um, obstacle yeah. after another. Um, I know that Taylor Sheridan wanted to make this two full seasons. And I agree that it this deserves more than just epi- eight episodes. Like he couldn't have told this full story in eight episodes. But I don't know that he needed 16 episodes. I, I feel like one 12 episode season might have been the ticket to kind of compact some of this action. Um, get him back to the ranch and to the manner at hand. Um, you know, my favorite characters to me, I mean, we've talked about Spencer and Alex a lot, but I thought Banner and, and Donald Woodfield, Peter Dalton's character, were really, they stole every scene they were in, especially Peter Dalton. This, he, he was tremendous in this. As evil as he was, he, he was just, it was arresting every time he was on screen. Uh, so for all those reasons, and just sort of a, a lack of whole hog enthusiasm, I'm going to give a 1923 a B. Okay. A, a real, real solid B. <laughs> Beefy B. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. Well, staff at tasteofcountry.com, if y'all want to want to add in your grading of what you give 1923, yeah, let us let us know. We've got an A, a B, and I'm going to go a minus. What I loved about, I love the time piece that we're in. Um, and kind of this transition of, you know, we're, we're coming into more industrial things and it's been fun watching, you know, Kara and Jacob when they went to town and seeing, you know, there's a washing machine and there's something called a, you know, refrigerator and just kind of seeing the transition there with cars and all the above. I really enjoyed that. Um, I also enjoyed, I, to Sterling's point, I felt like 1923 did a good job of, we really balanced, you know, romance with the everyday life and issues of the Dutton Ranch. Yes, we didn't get to see as much conflict with the Dutton Ranch as I necessarily expected, but I do f- like that they balanced it more where I feel like Yellowstone, well, 1883 wasn't, we got a little bit of that with, you know, uh, Tim and Faith's character, and we got a little bit of that with um, Elsa Dutton and Sam, uh, the Native American, but. I didn't feel like we got it as much as in 1883 and then <laughs> Yellowstone sometimes I, which I, I personally love uh, Yellowstone, but obviously 
with season five, there was a little bit between Jamie and Beth, just the conflict there. But also sometimes I do feel like it's too heavy on the just relational side of things that I felt like 1923 did a better job. But I also agree with you, Billy, and why give it an A minus was I don't feel like we needed. I mean, as much as you know that I love Spencer and Alex, it, it did get to a point where I was like, all right, like, and yet again, we're on it. Like, it took the entire season, and they're still not to Montana. Like, we are still trying to, you know, where I, I yeah. feel like it just <laughs> was beating a dead horse a little bit of like, okay, like, we, we get it. We, you're trying to get back home, where I feel like we could have put a little bit more light to your point. I totally expected, I mean, having two very noteworthy actors in this show, Helen Miram and Harrison Ford, I, I did expect them to have more of a presence where it were, yeah, to your point, Billy, we didn't, I, I mean, poor Jacob was just trying to heal and stay alive. I feel like half through halfway of this 1923. So yeah, for that reason, a minus, but overall enjoyed it. I guess my question is, is in season two, we uh, can you really have a full I, I don't know i can you have i mean like you said can you really have 16 episodes and not completely lose us i don't, I don't know so a minus right you know the character that none of us mentioned in this and this is kind of the fascinating sort of dilemma with 1923 is probably the most important thing happening on screen involves tiona's character and that's really been an education i think for anybody watching who who didn't 100%. have a really good sense of that sort of Native American history and the the true one hundred percent indigenous people, but no one wants to talk about it, or and most people don't even want to watch it. Like everybody just wants to like have watched it and have the knowledge, but it's so difficult yeah. to watch that trying to get people to engage in conversation about um, what Tiona has been through is really pretty challenging. Right? Um, it's almost like a it's an important, almost like an obligation. Um, that Taylor Sheridan has, I think, to sort of the history to tell that story, but um, and it's important, but it, it's not bringing people back week to week. Like you couldn't, ha I don't think you could tell, like have a whole series based on Oof. her character or her voyage in any Oof. sense. Which I hate, right. I hate saying that, like woof, but yeah, just because it's so, like you said, it it's I left with so much knowledge, but I also left with just so much. It's just really heavy, heavy to watch. I think it'd be hard for me every single Sunday showing up and watching. Could we uh, do one more thing? Ooh. Throwing sure. a curveball. Yes. What, what are we doing? Well, I hope we can kind of do this naturally. Um, we haven't talked about it in several weeks. There hasn't been any official movement with regards to Kevin Costner coming back to Yellowstone, those negotiations. A couple of cast members have said a little bit. Sterling. Right covered this pretty closely. Can you kind of just give us a sense of where we're at and mm. what we've kind of learned since you were last on the podcast telling us about, well, you know, the leaked information to deadline and um, an obvious rift between the yeah. two parties. After the deadline article, we got a, a Puck News article that was very closely sourced to two or three sources. And so... And what we're looking at here is basically, it's a standoff. And what is Kevin Costner's contract? Basically, you know, what that's what we're talking about right now. Um, basically, they were saying if he contracted for 10 episodes, he's in uh, the catbird seat. But if not, if they had said for season five, right? Okay. All of it, yep. If they negotiated for 10 episodes, then he's done eight, okay? Um, if not, he owes two more episodes, basically. And that's okay. where we are, you know? And if that's the case, then, you know, a, a week shooting schedule is um, kind of more realistic. You know, you gotcha. could do that. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. 
So a couple of takeaways I, from the Puck thing is one, it was pretty clear to me that Paramount was the one that leaked initially to Deadline because Puck quotes Kevin Costner's lawyer, who is really vehement with the denial and about his client's commitment. Right. So that that seems pretty right. clear. Another thing is that production for nineteen for uh, Yellowstone season five seems to be pushed back into the summer, if if not later, until they get this sorted out. Um, but I've also thought it to be yeah. kind of interesting that the rest of the cast is speaking to this to a certain extent. Wes Bentley, who plays Jamie, is saying it's probably a little bit of drama over nothing, which seems like um, a little bit like he's a. Uh, maybe being a little disingenuous. Um, but we've also had some other actors who admitted right. like they never saw Kevin Costner in the first place. So um, this is where this all right. has right. been heading for quite some time. Edison, yeah. you were going to add something yeah. there. You, you had your mouth open like you wanted to <laughs> talk. <laughs> and the baton's back to Edison. <laughs> yeah, what I thought was interesting when you were saying all that, Sterling, which is good to know too, you know, I think some people are coming in with the thought of like, oh, they've not filmed, se- you know, the next season. So he's saying he wants to do the entire season in one, you know, week where you're saying, you know, they might have already filmed X, Y, Z, and he's just contracted to do two more, you know, episodes, whatever. And that makes sense. Right. And then like, oh, right. him asking to shoot that in a week. All right. Like that makes, I don't know. I just think like understanding even that, if that is what's happening, like it, I don't know. It, it makes it a little bit more reasonable. None of this gets yeah. us to Kevin yeah. Costner beyond season five, though. I mean, no. all signs pointing nope. to Kevin Costner's nope. John Dutton dying. But soon. we've also we've no, he's 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 out. He's we've out. also yeah. said though, like, do we really see Yellowstone surviving on it, regardless if Kevin dies or not? Like, we've all said, like, this, surely we're not going to have another season after this next little nugget. Yeah. Nope. And maybe maybe for it. the best, maybe for the best. I think it's for the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. This season, yeah, I won't say it sucks, but <laughs> it's sorry, uh, I don't know why I just uh, but it's not. <laughs> continue, continue. <laughs> You're laughing. It's not. It's not the best season. You know. I think you gave it a B plus, which is a little bit of a better grade than I thought you were going to. Because in conversation, I know you. Uh, we're at times angry with where the like the the plot was going. I can see, you know, Taylor Sheridan is having to rewrite stuff on the fly. Uh, no, I mean, you know, part of it is is really good, and part of it is really bad. So here's a question I want to put to our audience. Uh, staff at tasteofcountry.com is okay. We kind of look to explore some some other shows, maybe to explore kind of it during this break, because I don't want to just have to disappear from the podcast and this conversation for six to eight months, although I do welcome a little bit of a break. Um, you know, we're going to stay within the Yellowstone universe and certainly cover Four Sixes and Bass Reeves and all those shows when they come. But is there another show that you're interested in that we could kind of take this? put this approach to and two I can think of that come to mind that might fit this audience that you can go places with our uh, Reacher on Amazon Prime, the Jack Reacher show, which is based on a novels by Lee Child. And the other one is Tulsa King when there's season two of Tulsa King with Sylvester Stallone, which is a Taylor Sheridan show. Mm-hmm. Could we sort of explore that in this sort of way? And if so, would you come with us for that or would you um, pass on a, t- a Tulsa King exploration. That's and I ask that question. with sincerity. I'm, I'm looking for some feedback there because, um, you know, very good. Ev- eventually that these are all going to be done. We'll have to figure out something else to do, but um, I'd like to begin that path sooner yeah, that's than a later. Good question. Yeah. Staff at taste of country.com is the email. I think you already said that Billy, but that's the email where you can leave those suggestions and thoughts. Very good. Well, y'all, anything else before we sign off? We we ended 1923 with an A minus for me, a B plus, f- no, a B for Billy, and then an A for Sterling. Billy, you looked like you were eager to right. say something before I cut us off. What what are you trying to say? 
Every week we ask people to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we do that sort of blindly because that's what people in podcasts always do. And so we just figured we would do it too. It seems like an important thing. I've learned, and I did not know this, and maybe you guys did, and I'm a fairly seasoned podcaster at this point, so maybe I should have known that the reason that those ratings and reviews are important is because it helps sort of sort of market the show a little bit. Other people who might be interested in this show are more likely to see our pod pop up in their feet and click and, and sort of join this conversation, which I think is good for everybody. It's not just a way to sort of boost our ego. So in sincerity, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts because we'd like to sort of grow this audience uh, yeah. a little bit more. Wait, so you're saying it's like literally like an algorithm wise, it will pop people like our podcast will pop up in people's feeds more. The more the more That's love it. we get, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, oh, well, thank uh, maybe you. that's intuitive, but I never really knew the reason why people are always begging you for reviews because I never review anything. <laughs> I don't, I don't either, which is really bad. As we're asking for <laughs> reviews, Billy, we need to get better at reviewing other people's stuff. We're asking that's yeah. 2023 get better at <laughs> this year. Yep. Fair enough. Well, truly y'all huh. thank you so much for all the rating and reviews that people have already um left we truly appreciate it and thanks sterling as always for for jumping on it's always fun getting to have all all three of us on and commentating thank you already as always dutton rules at yellowstone 1923 podcast is another great townsville media podcast <laughs>